thought I'd show you this tool that I use for putting in snap rings. Uh, the the idea of this tube is bored just the same size as the wrist pin, maybe just a little bit smaller than the wrist pin. But after the wrist pin's put in a piston, uh, you'll notice this has a little bit of a chamfer in there, and that helps me push the snap ring in there. This is a tool for putting in snap rings, and I get the snap ring pushed in on that taper, and then I use uh, this end of this piece of steel, which I call a pusher, but it it just helps me wiggle that snap ring and get it down where there's more gentle taper to get it in that tube. Then once it's in the tube, I turn it around and you can see there's a little bit bigger diameter on this end. This is this just to help me push the the snap ring in the in the tool. And then once it's in there, I use this end to force it down to where it's just even with the with this edge just even with that edge and the edge has a little bit of a a chamfer on the outside of it so it wants to fit in that hole and this part of the the pusher as I call it uh, this fits inside the wrist pin so what I do is I have the wrist pin all or the snap ring in there all set to go after the wrist pins in the piston I want to put that in there and the snap rings on the edge of it and I turn it to where the opening where I want the opening to be this fits in the wrist pin in the center of the wrist pin hole and I smack this right here on the end with a plastic hammer a small plastic hammer I give that a whack and what that does is it it pushes that snap ring into the groove it'll just snap in there real quick just by smacking it like that and that's how I put the 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 little snap rings in the in the groove real fast but uh, this is something I made a long time ago but it works pretty good it works on all the all the sizes of Rotax engines I guess I think maybe they all have the same wrist pin I don't know same size anyway okay enough about that This thing's pretty much back together and ready to take down to the hangar, I'd say. I I still got to do some blasting on my exhaust manifolds and get them painted back up again, which I usually have to do every couple of years anyways. Uh, but I think I've got everything ready to go. The motor mounts are on there, and it's pretty much ready to put back into plane. So this is the last I'll see of it. Uh, right side up like this for a while I'd say so she's ready to go got the recoil starter on it and everything so ready to put back in the plane some of my other videos there I think some of my great editing cut out some of the uh, things that I was talking about and uh, I think I should make some things clear because some people don't understand uh, what it is exactly that I was uh, talking about or why I made the decisions I did. Uh, I found out there was something wrong with one of these uh, bearings here that the the plastic race was cracked here, see? You can spot that from the other side. I don't know if it'll show up in this light, but what you're looking for is a ball like this that it looks like the ball isn't fitting very tight in the race. You see how I can move that back and forth? I mean, it's not tight in that cage, I should say. It's okay in the race, but it's not not tight in the cage. And the cages are plastic, and I believe they are uh, probably nylon. They're, they're real tough uh, plastic. They're very hard to break. I pushed out the, like on the other bearing, I pushed out the the cage and I found it quite difficult to snap it. Uh, the only giveaway is that you, it, it seems like it's a little loose uh, compared to the ball and that's how I spotted the thing. Uh, 
once I took the bearing off and could see this crack pretty easy once you look at this side it's pretty easy to spot them that they're cracked and the other thing I noticed and I think I made mention of it uh, that the 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 balls themselves look nice the bearing runs real smooth but uh, this crack in the plastic uh, cage seems to happen where their balls are. That seems to be the weak spot. And I've come up with a theory as to why that is, but I don't know if it's right. It's just my theory. I think that the balls get hot, and the heat from the balls, the ball themselves, are getting hot in there, you know, hotter than they should be, and it's starting to char the uh, the the plastic cage, the retainer, uh, and and of course this spot right here is why it wants to break right where the balls are. That's about the only place you can break it. If you work it and bend it real hard, you can snap it right where the ball is. And I think maybe that plastic has been exposed to enough heat to make it a little a uh, little brittle right there. Uh, I wouldn't say this plastic is brittle by any means, but it it definitely seems that's the weak spot. So my theory on that, I have a couple of them. I think that the heat is probably caused by lack of oil. I mean, these bearings are turning 5,000 RPM, and they've got to have some oil on there or they'll get pretty hot. Uh, so I think it's lack of oil, uh, especially with an inverted engine like I have. But I also have another theory, because I don't know if any of this is right. Now, one thing I found out is that this thing here is, they're magnetic. That these two things, it almost stick on there by itself, if you can see how they stick together. There's definitely magnetism in these two bearings, in the races. So it was probably part of the manufacturing process, but, but they are magnetic. You can you can almost pick that thing up. There's that much magnetism in it. That would, of course, attract uh, metal shavings and anything made out of steel, any kind of ferrous thing in there. Any wear of parts coming off the bearing are going to stick on there. Now, this, this is a race on the other bearing that I cut in two so I could get the balls out and examine them. But the races look really good. They are smooth. There's no spalling or scoring in there or anything. They look really good, other than the magnetism. So it could be just, they shouldn't be magnetism. I, I'm sure they shouldn't have magnetismism. That isn't good at all. So uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is people are wondering why I didn't replace the bearings, not only on the magneto end, where I found these, these bad ones, but on the other end. Well, the other end, uh, I couldn't see any any damage to the uh, you know to the to the plastic separator on the on the PTO end I could only look at one bearing unless I wanted to take them both off there which I could do but the one I'm looking at I saw no no damage to the plastic at all and the bearing again it ran very smooth it ran real nice on there so the one difference that I saw was that I had made that modification with the oil way, that oil hole that come down in there, and I used a little Dremel tool to make a little bit more exposure so oil could get between the seal and the bearing. On the on the magneto end, I had not done that modification. Uh, I suppose because I thought, well, there's not much load on the magneto end anyways. Like I say, it was 20 years ago, and I don't know what my thinking was then. But I, I took that crankshaft out of there when I first got this engine from the first owner that had it. In fact, I had the engine before I built the Chinook. So I did not uh, replace the bearings on the PTO end because they looked fine and I couldn't see they'd be any difference. If I bought a new crankshaft, it'd have the same, same kind of bearing in there and it would probably sound and feel the same. So I... I couldn't see any reason to do anything. It wasn't cracked like these were. And both of these bearings on the on the mag side had broken. The, 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 the cage had broken, the plastic cage had broken like that. The one bearing was in three pieces. This, this bearing I cut in two, it broke in three places. So 
after developing the theory that I think that they that they broke because of heat I decided it must be because not enough oil or this magnetism which I just discovered that, that they uh, they're magnetic uh, anyways why uh, I decided that I would replace the ones on the magneto side with the metal caged uh, bearings but I can't say for sure that the metal cages are going to be better. I, I can't say that, that the metal cage would be better than the plastic. I just think it would be. That's just my thinking on it. I think they'll take more heat. The bearing guy said they use metal cages on where they're going to put these bearings in a like an oven or a furnace or a conveyor that goes through a uh, some kind of automatic furnace or something like that. They'll use those ones with the metal cages. So they are designed for heat. And... Uh, but that doesn't solve the problem of not having enough lubrication on it. Uh, anyways, I thought I'd try them. So I, I did that on the 447 that I told you years ago I had. And I uh, had the rear bearing go bad on that. And the plastic uh, cage here came out and got up against the rubber seal. It made a lot of noise, but the plane still flew. It, it just made a lot of racket. And after I landed for a while and let the the things cool off I could feel it those bearings were hot by feeling the uh, the case on the engine uh, after they cooled off I started up took off and it didn't make any more noise after that but I could see that the shaft was not running concentric it was wobbling around and of course the shaft seal would leak if the shaft isn't running true so I just uh, flew it back to the hangar and uh, decided I gotta tear that apart and fix it and I did use the metal Cage bearings to fix it. So that's the story on the 447 and I just did the same to this. But I did not put the uh, Dremel tool in there and make that little elongated path so that oil could get in there easier. And uh, I did do that now on this so this has been done on both ends so we'll see how it goes now. So it has the plastic cages on the PTO end and on the mag end it's got the metal cage bearings and I guess I'll find out how it makes out. I don't think I'm going to wait 20 years to look at it again. I'm, I'll probably take it apart and look at it again the next time I decarbonize this thing. I'll see how they're doing in there. But, uh, but anyways, that's the reason why I didn't change anything was, well, I, I can't see how having another bearing of the same type in there would be any better. It wouldn't be any different than what I had. So... Uh, I know a lot of people say, well, you should put a whole new crankshaft in there, but that was the whole point of taking this one out, is to see uh, to see how it was after after all this time running. Like I say, I have another engine I could put in there with 115 hours, but it's the same as, as this. It's going to have the plastic cage bearings. I can't see any difference in it. So uh, if, if these plastic uh, cages on there are getting hot from a lack of of uh, oil I'm hoping that that modification will improve that situation and maybe it'll run okay now and I can't say for sure that the metal cages won't cause trouble they might I have no idea there's probably some reason that the engine manufacturer didn't use them to start with but it could be that well these plastic ones are cheaper I that that would be my guess why they do that but but I really don't know so Anyways, this project's done now, and, uh, and the engine's together and all done, so uh, 